In this video, I'd like to introduce the idea of n particle systems in Maya. Now we're going to start with the basics. However, the n systems, there's actually several of them, including n clop, n hair, and n particles. Now before we begin though, if you have just started out in Maya and you've been only working with the modeling element, in the upper left hand corner here under your main menu bar, you have this drop down here where it's the sets of the menus here and you may have only been working in the modeling options. You are going to want to actually, one of two things, I normally like to go to the FX and change over here as far as my menu options here. However, you do also have your tabs here where you could go to FX and you have the same options here as far as creating an emitter, particle system, adding end cloth, etc. It's up to you. Me personally, just because of all of the different software packages I use, I prefer main menu bars. So right now you can see you actually have several N systems here available to you, but I'd like to zoom in and focus on the N particle to start off with and just the basics. When you make an N particle system, you're going to get three elements. You're going to get the particles that are connected to the emitter that are then controlled via the nucleus. So under N particle, I'm going to come down here and just tell it to create an emitter. And what's nice about this is when you create the emitter, it makes all three of the core elements that you're going to need to work with a particle system. Now particle systems overall, one thing that you need to keep in mind is that animation is now involved. A particle system really isn't a stagnant thing that you're modeling or anything like that, where yes, we can play through it, pause it, and then do a render, of the particles frozen, but you're going to have to animate. So one thing uh, that I do suggest, depending on your computer's capabilities, is coming down to your playback bar. And down at the bottom here, depending on what you had it set to, for the end of the animation, I'd actually tug this back a little bit. Like normally when I open Maya, it's in like the 1800s. For this demonstration and because I'm recording, I cut it down to 120. So I'm going to go ahead here, push this all the way to the back, and I'm just going to hit the play button. And voila, you can see I have little particles. And that's the basics. Now, the thing is, though, the emitter, the particles, and the nucleus were all placed at 0, 0, 0 in your environment. So what if I wanted to actually change or work with uh, the positioning. The big thing you're going to be moving is your emitter. The particles are tied to the emitter and the end particle system controls as far as what those particles are going to look like. The emitter though is where are the particles coming from. So to show you here, keeping the emitter highlighted, if I come in and go ahead and do a quick move here, I'm pulling it up a little bit higher, but as you can see, Maya has not refreshed from my previous pause. So if I hit play, you can now see that it re-updates itself and you can see now that where the emitter is, it's now falling down from a higher level there. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this all the way back and let's talk a little bit more here. I'm gonna come over to my attribute editor and talk a little bit about the actual pieces here. You can see whenever you're working with an emitter, you also have the end particle shape and the nucleus tab available to you. Again, the emitter is where the particle system is coming from. So some of the things as far as that you may want to work with is, for instance, the number of particles per second. I often advise students that as you're setting up your scene, maybe take this down a little bit from a testing standpoint so that you're not pushing your system too hard. So like I did 25 a second, so you can see that I've really kind of lightened the load there. Once you're ready and you think that you need more, then yeah, you can take it up to say, maybe I'll change it to 150. Let's see how that looks. And you see that I'm getting a lot more particles appearing there. 
Now also too, you have different emitter types where you can choose as far as directional, omni being the default, a surface type, which you do want to have a surface for, a volume as far as a container, and then also a curve as far as how you would like to control it. I'm going to keep moving on here, but I wanted to point out those options for you that those can give you a lot of different special effects as far as working with those emitters. If you're just starting out with the particles, which is the focus of this video, starting out with directional and just practicing with the basics is absolutely fine. Now I'd actually like to jump over the part the end particle shapes and I'd like to talk a little bit about the nucleus. First off, in a Miocene, you're only going to have one nucleus. Nucleus, in the grand scheme, controls gravity and wind. So for instance here, like, let me go ahead, let's turn off gravity and take a look at what we get. So there you can see just straight line, you know, kind of pushing out. You can also see where my gravity is. So if I do a zero here, kind of removing gravity altogether, but then if I start to kind of re-add gravity here, and maybe I do, there you can see it's kind of starting to change there a little bit as far as the speed is concerned. Or I can do maybe negative one, and for the y we'll do negative one. So there you can kind of see how it's working through there. So let me go ahead and stop that a second. And whoops, we're going to go back to negative 1.0. Can I get a nice little diagonal there? So a couple of other things too that you can work with is also air density and wind speed. While you may have a baseline for your gravity, you can actually change as far as the air density and the speed of the wind. So while you may just keep gravity as far as pulling down on your object, your wind may actually begin, it's a little more subtle, but it can help as far as push out the general elements here, as far as each of the individual particles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually change this back here. I was on directional so that you could see as far as the angles of the wind and the gravity, and I'm going to change this back to Omni. And actually, I'm going to take this down. I'm going to take this back down to 100. So now, if we take a look here, I can move the nucleus around, but it's not going to change much as far as what it's pulling on here. So for instance, like if I come down to the nucleus, and like let's say I move it over here off to the side, Notice with zero gravity, the part of the emitter, it's not really affecting it. This literally, the nucleus just needs to be in the scene to control the overall pool of gravity and wind. And what I'd like to show you here is, okay, so if I have this nucleus, what if I want to add another emitter? So you'd still go to end particle, you'd create an emitter. Notice what happens here. I have a second emitter added in my outliner, along with a second set of particles that's tied to that emitter. But notice, unlike the first time when I added an emitter, there's no new nucleus there. So now, if I backtrack and play, you see how I have two emitters going off simultaneously. So I kind of got this fireworks effect going on here. Which brings me to kind of the final point here of going over the basics is the particle shapes themselves. The particle shapes themselves, 
you can change as far as their lifespan of how long they live or how long they are present in the scene. Some of the other items though that you can change is things such as the particle size and probably one of the biggies that folks really like to start off with is the shading option. Under shading, we have some pre-built in elements that you can work with. So you could do things like clouds. It's a great way to practice with getting comfortable with the controls of the emitters and flipping between an emitter and the nucleus, but still getting some different effects as far as being able to kind of see what you can work with. They're also great placeholders. So you can see I kind of took the opacity down here, getting a little bit more of kind of a smoke feel here or a cloudy feel. And it's one of those things that it can make life a little bit easier having those placeholder emitters and then adding in your own models or your own effects as far as each of those go. So there's a lot that goes into and particle systems, but this is just a starting point as far as looking at the three core pieces and adding them into a scene.